All right, well, that was a lot of work here. We identified this is the main chain, uh, and then we just talked about how to name a substituent on another substituent, in case that does come up uh, on your test. And we talked about how if there's a locator for the substituent, you put that in parentheses. And we even reviewed a little bit nomenclature for ethers. Let's try giving a name to this. It's going to follow pretty similar principles to what we've seen before. So this is uh, not really all that much new. Okay. Now, one thing that you did was good is that you numbered your parent chain. However, I, I, mean, I think I missed a carbon, though. That's right. Yeah. You were treating that like a substituent, mm -hmm. but we want to put as much as possible on the parent chain. So it looks like you caught that mistake. Good. So at first you thought there was three carbons on the parent chain, but then on looking again, you can put all of these carbons on the parent chain. It's tempting to just treat this like a substituent, but we might as well treat it as part of the parent chain. We want to make the parent chain. Mm -hmm. Good. Two butene. Do we, we have to give indication of right where we, the double bond starts? Yep, absolutely. Let's go ahead and write that down. What you were saying sounds good. So I had two phenol, two butene. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Now there's one other point here. Okay. I think you might have uh, seen this on some of the other videos. Double bonds have stereochemistry. That is, they can be either E or Z. Uh, if you might have watched some of the other videos, I noticed that students oftentimes have a hard time remembering to put in the E or Z nomenclature. So, what, was, what, what did you think this was? Um, e? Yeah, that's right. How do you know it's E? Because they're opposite. Or is it E? Actually, let's see. So, the problem here is this carbon only has one substituent. That's correct. The only carbon over here, this is the only substituent. But there's two substituents on this carbon. Here's a substituent, and here's another substituent. Well, which one should we focus on? If we focus on this, it'll seem like it's on the same side as this. But this one seems like it's on the opposite side. I think you focus on the one that, uh, the one that has, is it higher mass? Is that how it works? I forget. That's on the right. Yeah, you're remembering the basic idea. That point is, we have to focus on the one that gets the higher priority. And the priority system is the same system that you use for R and S naming. It's the same system as for R and S naming, which is based on atomic numbers. So let's do a little brief review of the R and S naming. I'll go ahead and write out what we have attached here. So here, so basically we have a tie, because here's a carbon and here's a carbon. So we can list what is this carbon attached to. Well, this carbon's attached to three hydrogens. But what is this carbon attached to? Um, two carbons and a uh, hydrogen. This one over here? Oh, now, me, uh, three carbons. Now, it's got a single bond to this carbon, and it's got a double bond to this carbon. I don't know if you remember from RNS naming, but if you have a double bond, you just treat that as two separate bonds. Okay. So we're going to treat this double bond as two separate bonds to carbon, and here's another bond to carbon. Okay. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that this list beats this list. We just look for the first point of difference while this carbon beats this hydrogen. Therefore, this gets the higher priority. So I'll go ahead and circle this and circle this. This is the higher priority substituent on the left-hand alkene carbon, and this is the higher priority substituent on the right-hand alkene carbon. So it turns out that the two substituents we need to focus on are on the same side of the double bond. Okay. Do you remember if that's E or Z? Z. That's Z. That's right. 
I don't know if you've seen in some of the videos, there's a nice, uh, funny mnemonic, Zame Zide. Yeah. Z stands for Zame Zide. Uh, we're here there on the Zame Zide, just like E stands for Epposite Sides. So I think your first guess was that this was going to be E because you were focusing on the two methyl groups. But since we're focusing on these substituents, it should be Z for Zame Zide. that would be put in parentheses. Z2-phenyl-2-butene. Now, since your, question, your test is multiple choice, so you don't need to have remember to put in the Z, you'll see it in the choices. Sure. So you'll know to think about that. I, you probably were assuming here that you should compare the two similar substituents, but it turns out that that's not the rule. If there's more than one substituent on an alkene carbon, you have to use the atomic number trick to figure out which one is the higher priority, and that tells you which one you're focusing on. Uh, but maybe I should have asked you, have you seen any E and Z naming on the, on the well, last minute picture? The last time, and, uh, we didn't have time to go over it, and I didn't get a chance to go over it in second language, so I'm glad. But it, but it has been on some of the quizzes? Yeah. Okay, so it's good that we talked about this. And the other thing we saw is try to include as many carbons as possible on the main chain. Here we were able to include all four carbons on the main chain. So we use butte and not probe. Now, this was one of the compounds that we learned a common name for. Mm. Of course, you haven't had a chance to memorize those yet, but you might uh, see if you can go back. Pardon? Toline or? Toline. Toline. There you go. Yeah. So this can also be called a toluene, mm -hmm. but this is a substituted toluene. So how, how could we name this substituted toluene? We can use it kind of using similar principles that we've seen in the past. Take a guess as to what the name for this would be. Toluene, uh, toluene, bromide. Okay, that's not a bad guess, except that in the past we've seen halogens don't get suffixes, bromide. they get prefixes. That's right. Um, there, there's one little exception to that. Acyl halides, in an acyl halide, the halogen does get the, the suffix, but otherwise halogens get prefixes. So I think you were saying bromotoluene? Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, anyway, this is the, 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 the parent right here, so this gets the suffix, and we need a locator. One. Now, because we're naming this toluene, this has to be the number one carbon. We're giving this pride of place. Four. Right. Four bromotoluene. However, there's a whole other way of naming things when there's two substituents. That's the O, M, and P system, which I, I think, maybe, I don't know if you've actually, I guess in the videos you haven't gotten that far, although maybe you saw that in the last quiz. So another way of naming substituents is the position that's right next to your substituent is called the ortho position. The position that's one further away is called the pair. Let's try it again. Meta. Oh, you already said that. Good. And then, what well, should we call this final one down here? Uh, is it para? That's the pair. That's right. Ortho, meta, and then para. There's, you can see that there's two ortho positions, two meta positions, but there can only be one para position. Okay. So these are often called ortho, meta, and para. Or they can just be called... O, M, and P. The O and, and P positions. That's a common way to name it as well. And, and to just remember the order, I just remember the syllable ump. If I just say ump, that tells me the order of the O, M, and the P. Ump. So what position is this bromine in relative to the toluene methyl group? In the pair position. So instead of four bromotoluene, we could call it pre, uh, P. Bromotoluene. So those would both be acceptable.
So we're going to name this using the same system. First of all, we're going to have to look up what the common name is for this NH2 on the benzene. Well, using that, we should be able to follow the same pattern as we did for this first example to give a name here. Let's give that a shot. Um, now, uh, I just have a little unusual to have two vowels together. Yep, but don't worry about it. Okay. And chloroaniline. You got it. Even though you have two vowels, it was very, it was very easy to pronounce, right? So we don't need to worry about that. That's a good name. 